This is Happy Monkey. This is Happy Monkey. Vlad and Ramon, welcome uh, to the Boulevard with the, Happy Monkey yeah, man. in small town New York City. Yeah, man. So yeah, just talking some shit, man. So um, basically, let's get down to simplify and real simple, uh, real simple question. CBD, everybody. What's up with CBD? What do you think about CBD, my friend? Does it work? You think is it? I think I think it does it, work. I it, think CBD. What's going on? I think CBD does work, and it's like a great introductory point for people that don't want to get high, just want to use it for medicinal purposes. But I also believe that when they start releasing all the other cannabinoids like yeah. CBA, CBG, yeah. NYC, all the, all the other all thousand, the ones, other thousand ones, I believe that it won't be as popular because there's a lot of other cannabinoids that also have a lot of uses that they just haven't put out to the public yet. Right. So maybe let's let's break this. Let's take it back a little bit. Maybe let's say, what is CBD? Where did it come from? What plant does it come from? What's you know what's up? Um, so CBD is uh, comes from hemp flower, obviously, um, pretty much a uh, marijuana plant cousin. You know, it looks just like marijuana. If you, you know, if you plant them next to each other, you would think they're the same, but they're not. They got distinct differences. And hemp, everybody, is basically an awesome alternative to a lot of the bullshit that we use today as far as, like, gas, plastic... Uh, how many things you know fucking furniture uh, so many different uses right so now they use this plant hemp crete hemp crete and they use this plant and uh, for also for for ailments and different um, medical uses pets. oh for pets definitely for pets for the doggies and the cats out there in these streets um CBD so CBD is uh let's 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 uh let's uh work on one of the popular topics as far as what people use CBD for for pain a lot of people use CBD for pain I use it so I use it like vitamins like I take it once or twice a day just like from you know just to help me take the edge off and relax and stuff aside from smoking it's, it's like taking vitamins to me it takes off, I, I, I guess, uh, anxiety before you go out into the world. Exactly. And, okay. I, and I think it's also healthy for you on top of that, you know, for your endocannabinoid system, which we all have. Mm -hmm. I use it more from when, like I, like I just mentioned, when I'm in pain. So if I have, like, let's say my back is aching or whatever the case may be, or I have a muscle that's sore. I they use have the for topicals that. for that. Yeah, they got the topicals for that. Like, pain creams and stuff like that. It's like half and half. It's like see half C B D half pain cream or whatever the fuck they put in pain creams. It's been a big explosion as far as like maybe like the last three, four years that it's become a big thing. I mean, it's fucking they're growing it everywhere now. It's legal. They should be able to grow it everywhere. Um my life uh, a goal of mine would be able to uh, will be able to uh, I want to be able to help uh, the Dominican Republic grow some hemp because you know they far they're not even like in that topic yeah, yet like, like so, years ahead of the whole cannabis so, wave so you know our you know one of our things is to pretty much take on the impossible so that would be one of my goals is to kind of educate and help facilitate uh, growing hemp in the Dominican Republic because they have many uses for it. Third world countries have more uses for it than we would say as far as, uh, I guess, us in America here, third world, uh, first world country. And I think, like I said, I think it's going to be the one out of the 113 cannabinoids that's going to kick the door down for everything else because it's allowing it to be safe and more mainstream and to be in more mainstream society so i think it's gonna help the whole genre as a whole shit man i just like to smoke weed and look at art bro straight up i s smoke weed and look at art. Smart, smoke weed and look at art sometimes people want to make it too 
scientific and you know I, I get it it helps to pass the laws and to explain to people what, what benefits and all that other shit but sometimes I just want to smoke weed and look at art and you're a recommendational user as a mind but you know then there's also the medicinal side to it so that's yeah. why there's two different aspects to the whole thing absolutely um I don't know many people who well I don't know many people who smoke and don't like art so I I, I mentioned it too because you know we love to like um collaborate with a lot of artists that does pieces for us and yeah, stuff like that. So we have our little Happy Monkey Art Basel. We yeah, have all these pieces. We got a lot of different pieces for a lot of people who don't know. Um, we we work with a lot of local artists. Um, we work with uh, people, uh, our home, our, home pe- uh, our folks, uh, our friends. Now they're our friends because they worked with us and they've been around for a little while working uh, Woken Arts. Nice couple, dope couple. They fucking do some dope ass art for us. They did our first ever Happy Monkey piece. Um, shout out to Uncut Art You know what I mean Protect your heart If you ever seen a Protect your heart stencil Out there in the streets Or an art piece Or he was in the, um, the Netflix show uh, She's Gotta Have It You know You'll see him out there Shout out to him um, He came in here He came and did some Fly shit Like it took him like Three days Like he came And just started smoking And like Shout out to him too For <laughs> donating that piece To the, um, the Last to the, Prisoner to the last Project, prison project. Absolutely You he know that donated. was really Yeah That was yeah. really nice of him They definitely They auctioned that off And That was a really dope piece By him You know um, We got a lot of friends In the art community I, I'm 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 proud and happy To be a part of that You know And facilitate a lot of our friends Cause a lot of them Don't get a lot of credit you know, it's hard to be in art and make money, so cannabis is another that industry is, that'll help that out. You know what I mean? That is one industry that's all passion. It's art all, industry. Yeah, you got to have a lot of passion for that. So shout out to all of you guys who smoke and paint. Oh, glass blowing, absolutely. Right, shout out to the glass blowers. We need we need to have more glass blowers around us. How about that, man? We need what's up with the like New York glass blowers? You know any New York glass blowers? Upstate is famous for its glass. Uh, yeah, right, so yeah, maybe maybe we need to um invite some glass blowers down here and do some shit for us like a monkey head. That'd be cool. We can talk about that. Cafe that everybody's been talking about. Oh, no. Um, low Farms. There's actually a friend farms. of ours that's visiting right now from Hollywood, Los yeah. Angeles, that was telling us about so how the, amazing it is. Yeah. Shout out to Lowell in California, the first ever consumption lounge in the nation to open up. How, when did they open up? Last week? Something like that? September 20th, I think. September 20th. Look at that. Something around there. I mean, we, we might be wrong, but absolutely. But the the fact is that they definitely open. Um, you can definitely go and smoke weed there. I've seen that they have. They it looks very fly from what I've seen in the Instagram pictures. It has this real like uh, uh, I don't know, like a speakeasy. It's still got it like like a old school speakeasy vibe, but it's like the Cali. Now on the boulevard, ladies and gentlemen, president of Bang Edibles, Jamie Pearson. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, today on the Happy Monkey Podcast on the boulevard, we usually have uh, local guests, but today we have this very, very special boss lady here today, Um, owner of Bang. No, no C-O-O. owner. C O O. C O O. Chief Officer Oper- Chief Officer uh, Operating Officer. Am I correct? You're correct. Okay. The only reason I say no to the owner, yes, I'm a shareholder, but we went public in July, so we have Ooh, lots of owners. Boss lady, ladies and gentlemen, as I said to mm-hmm. you, she is here. Can you please introduce yourself to the people that you let them know who you are, um, what you do, and where they can find you? Okay, well, I'm Jamie Pearson. I'm the COO of Bang Corporation. Bang is a publicly traded cannabis company that started 10 years ago in Oakland. We were born in Oakland. We are now located in Miami. We're in nine states, soon to be 10, with our THC products. We're in all 50 states, except for Idaho, I think, that's outlawed CBD. 
uh, with our CBD products. We've had CBD products in the United States for nine years, which a lot of people nine years ago weren't talking about that. Absolutely not. So we've got a very visionary CEO, and one of his favorite sayings is, if we'd asked America, uh, it's a Henry Ford saying, if I'd asked America what they wanted, they would have said a faster horse. So the point is, when you're Henry Ford and you're mm -hmm. going to invent a car, you're giving people something that they don't know they even need, and that's what my CEO is trying to do. Nice. So we have chocolate bars and gum and breath spray and mints and we just acquired a company called red ace that sells beet juice three organic beets per bottle we're going to do a line extension in whole foods with cbd we're being distributed in nine foreign countries getting ready to enter china our thc partnership with indiva also a publicly traded company is um, getting ready to start in canada when edibles on October 19th become legal for application and on December 19th legal for distribution. So we got a lot going on and um, I manage about 20 people under me and my executive team is 50% um, women and our staff is 70% women, which is something that's important to me. Diversity is something that we care about and walk the walk, not just talk the talk. So we're in town right now in New York City. I'm getting ready to put together a partnership with the Harlem Hospital and Bang, and we're going to do a research study on rheumatoid arthritis. We're offering up the CBD, and we're just in the planning stages right now, just really excited to be able to do something positive for the community that's in Harlem. Awesome. First that's and foremost, that. I want to give a round of applause Absolutely. for our first global she just star, said, she just Jamie said Pearson. She just that yeah. was crazy. On the boulevard, just went Absolutely. Global, that was a very, very, very well put together uh, little bio about yourself, <laughs> young lady. Twice. That was fucking <laughs> awesome. That's That was some real boss shit to say. And that's who we are. You yeah, and that's know. who you are. That's now just you know. real facts. That's just, just facts. Like we say here in New York, for everything that's truth, we say facts. You know, so they go, that's facts. So that was real, real hard. Everybody. I'm going to weave that in later. Watch <laughs> me. I just got to plan it. Boom. There so, you go. So okay. tell us a little bit about yourself and the boss lady's journey and where do you hail from? So my cat lives in Montana. <laughs> <laughs> What's your cat's name? My cat's name is Gary. Oh, like shout out snail. to Gary. Yo, Gary, if you're listening, Fun yo, job, right? sorry she ain't feeding you right now. Oh, yeah, Gary's my, he's mad We have our me. own superstar named Essence. Yeah, yeah, is Essence. Right? Yeah, yeah, Essence the cat. Here? In yeah. She's always, she's Where always, is she? I want to see her. We'll, we'll let you see her before you walk out okay. the podcast. I can't yeah, wait. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, a yeah. cat Queen person. Queen of the castle. Yeah, so my cat lives in Montana. With my furniture and my clothing, and I carry a suitcase, and I'm all over the place. So we're based out of Miami. Um, we're in nine states, and I'm responsible for running around and oh making my. sure all those people are doing what they're supposed to be doing, which we've got great partners. Oh and um, one of the things I'm excited about, we're about to open Nevada. But about me, let's see. I started out as a real estate investor, and I've been investing in real estate for 25 years. And... Um, my specialty there is really finding money um, because ultimately I didn't have any money when I got started. So right. I, I had to figure it out and I started doing creative deals and a um, couple things that I think are also important in my journeys. My dad's been a grower for 55 years. Oh, and okay. It's in the bloodline. It's in the blood. Now we get, now we get into the I real. I will never fall as far from the tree. Uh, 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 uh. So, okay. So, okay. Yeah. Daddy's so, an OG. Daddy's an OG. Uh, he sells to cowboys. That's his. <laughs> I mean, we're, I grew That's up on a awesome. cattle ranch in Montana, and he's <laughs> still there, and crazy. he's still growing, and he, the same cowboys are still coming around. Um, but you know, I was never really supposed to talk about that when I was young. So now mm -hmm. it's cool. But now it's like whatever, right? Growing up in the '80s, you know, we it, it was we a were quiet, yeah. little different, yeah, a little different. different out in the ranches. Yes. Yeah. And it really wasn't anything I had much to do with. I, you know, I, I'm not putting myself out there as an OG. I mm -hmm. was a basketball player. I played in high school, what? college. Come on, you an OG. You you doing all sorts hoops. of shit. You play hoops. I'm I'm a point guard. Oh, oh shit! Well, that makes sense. That's why you're running the the whole team now. <laughs> That's why you're running the whole team. You know, now. We the, get it. there's we a get lot it. of truth to that. You know, the point guard on the floor is a coach. I'm used to telling people what to do, where to go. I right. pick the plays. I I'm reading the court. Yeah, you plan it out. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's and right. I also loved being on basketball teams with strong women and athletes, so that comes naturally to me as well. In this industry, there's a lot of strong women. Absolutely. Uh-huh. We, 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 keep saying, yeah, we keep saying it. Yeah, we keep saying it. There's a lot of strong pillars in this industry are obviously women. If you don't know, for those who don't know, and once, once you start looking into the industry, you will see. So It's one of the things I love about the industry. So, so tell us about how was your first interaction in the cannabis industry and how was they took the leap of faith from mm-hmm. real estate to cannabis. Wow. So I'm going to tell you the quickest version of that I can. And the first thing is I was a landlord to a grower um, that had a multi- I like the way the story started. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he actually had a business very similar to the Happy Monkey and it still exists. It's similar but different. Um, he was growing, but he was giving his medicine to people that were terminally ill. And he was in a building that had mold and he knew that I had another building for rent and asked me if I would rent it to him. That was about 15 years ago. He's still in that building. He's Uh, still got the same business. Okay. Bless him. I grew up with my dad growing, so I didn't have a lot of taboo. I understood that marijuana made people, people feel better. They Mm -hmm. used it for medicinal purposes, but he really opened my eyes to, all those people walking in with walkers and, you know, scars on their head from brain surgery and the different things. So I saw what he was doing and took a risk because in Montana it was a risk to oh, rent. Yeah. Oh, we oh, have yeah. no doubt about that. You don't <laughs> yeah. have to convince us about yeah, that you don't one. Have to You're right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I took that risk 15 yeah. years ago, but paid off and there's still tenants. Meanwhile, on my mom's side of the family, DJ Muggs from Cypress Hill is my first cousin. So, Shout out to them. Shout yeah, out. Cypress Hill. And when um, I was in law school in 1992, <laughs> I believe, Muggs lit a joint on Saturday Night Live. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and like, I really, um, like I said, I was a college athlete. So the whole weed culture was not my culture. And, you know, so I was sort of, uh, I wouldn't say embarrassed, but like, oh, shit, that just happened. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was trying to be in law, be in law and go right. to law school. So anyway, it was it was all right. He's um, he's a good guy. And um, and he tells the story, which is really funny, about how he had a joint behind his ear when they were doing sound check. And he was like he walked up on the stage and this person's like, you know, you can't light that joint on on oh, national that was television. The wrong, that was the wrong thing well, to he, say to Well, he was like, like yeah, that. cool. No, I have yeah. no intention. He's like, I was going to smoke it. And yeah. then he keeps walking. Someone's like, you know, you can't light that joint. And he's oh, like, that's it. he got two more steps. It was again. And he's like, by the 19th per- person, he's like, all right, now I'm, I'm lighting the light joint. It. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. So, and then he had them play, um, ain't going out like that. Ain't going out like that. Yeah. So that's what he did. So I got dad um, growing weed. I got mugs on my mom's side. Weed's very... Um, prevalent in my family and then this guy wants me to rent to him I did and then fast forward a few years later Muggs called me from Colorado they had a company hitting them up for a deal and he he sent me the contract like took pictures of it and said read this tell me what you think I sent him an email and said I wouldn't do that if I were you and gave him all the litany of reasons the contract wasn't good and he and I'd been investing in real estate together for about you know 15 years at that point so we had a good working relationship. He trusted my opinion about the contract. So that's how I got with Cypress because then he asked me if I would just find them a weed brand to your weed company to do a deal with because they were getting hit up so much. And uh, I said, well, I don't really know anything about the industry. I just know how to make deals. I know how to find money. And he's like, well, go do your thing. I trust you. You'll find somebody good. And I just started going to conferences and learning and found bang and found a bunch of other companies so we kissed a lot of frogs before we found uh-huh. our prints uh-huh. yeah and then we ended up with bang and the thing that was important to the band was that they didn't want to slap their name on someone else's product you know they wanted to have a say they wanted it to be quality it would be um we they would smoke themselves so it was important to them that it was really representative of who they are as um the weed icons that they are so um, it, I just didn't want to screw that up. I wanted to be respectful of those guys. I've known them all f- my whole life, pretty much since I was like 13 or 14 or however old I was when I first met them. And, um, you know, they're like family. They're good dudes. They're really nice people and good businessmen. So Good, good, good. So yeah. we go going to ask you something we ask every Happy Monkey uh-uh. Uh, member. Uh-uh. Real, real nice, nice little question. So, you know, we know you got this real long background. 
I mm-hmm. obviously with cannabis. Daddy's an OG. Cypress Hill. When was the first time you got high? <laughs> yeah, so we asked all our guests that. Oh my God. Oh, I don't. I don't right. honestly remember. I gotta think about <laughs> it. So I'll tell you the the my first time doing it as an adult. Okay. Because I okay. don't remember. Like, it. like I know I smoked one time in college. I remember at a Red Hot Chili Peppers concert, but I don't think I knew what I was doing and I don't mm-hmm. think much came out of yeah, that Yeah, that's why experience. we say the first time you get high because that's so, like the one you remember. The one I really remember is that I was, um, it was in 2012, so seven years ago, I guess, and um, I was at a family wedding and I got sick. I had food poisoning and I was vomiting and I was like um, not enjoying myself very right. much and my nephew, who was like 16 or 17 at the time, <laughs> was like, come on in, Jamie. I'm going to literally I'm going to take you behind the barn and you're going to smoke this joint and you're going to stop throwing up. And I said, OK, well, I would have done anything he would ask right, me at to that do point, at that yeah. point. So we went behind the barn and smoked Smoke the, joint. the joint. Smoking and on. Hey. I stopped vomiting instantly, instantly. And it was this moment where I was like, oh, shit. Like, I've been reading about this and seeing the medical benefits. And then I got paranoid. And I was laying in bed next to my mom, like, I wonder if she knows I'm high. And I just had that. Right. I had a bad trip. And it wasn't fun. But then, um, yeah, the rest is history. The rest is history. <laughs> now you're here. Bang. Can you spell it out for the people? B-H-A-N-G. And you can go to Bang Chocolate or Bang Nation. That's our website. Bang.chocolate is our Instagram handle. And all the links to everything you need, you'll find on those two places. We also sell our CBD worldwide on bangcbd.com. Awesome. Wonderful. So what do you think, that out of all, since you travel so much and you get to see all the different aspects and perspectives on where the industry is in different places, where would you say right now is like a really big hot that you have an eye on for that you see that's a really up and coming market in the country? Mm, that's a hard question because um, other than California, I s- well the whole West Coast, Seattle, mm-hmm. um, all the way down, the rest of the country is still so far behind what's happening on the West Coast that. Absolutely. Um, you know, like we've got a robust business going on in the Chicago area in Illinois, and that's a good market. But I'm hearing great things about Oklahoma and really want to, you know, put my footprint in Oklahoma because I guess they're selling um, about two thirds of the amount that's being sold in the state of Nevada, which is impressive because Oklahoma. Nevada's going through some wheat. Oklahoma, yeah, yeah I've been hearing wow. that too. What's going yeah. on with Oklahoma as far as the laws and stuff like that? What was there, there's like a they, they they're really more loose from what I hear than other states as far as like for people going through the process to get licenses and grows and retails. Yeah, right. Harry, you could say you could you could say it's all good. Can I do that? Okay. Yeah. Um, Oklahoma issued six hundred and thirty uh, retail licenses to start. So just in case you guys didn't hear that, our accountant in the back. Harry says that there are <laughs> 630 licenses. That was the initial round. Was that was the first round. So, oh, so Oklahoma, like, they, they. Well, that's what they. It's, it's that's what they did in Montana, in Oklahoma, right? So I guess that's the point, right? Yeah, I mean that's what they did in Montana, and they they initially said, "Oh, no shit, it was five bucks to get a license." <laughs> you it was like you wrote you wrote the license out you sent in five dollars and now it's oh like five thousand to get a license if oh. it, you have this many patients oh. and ten thousand so they figured out how to weed people out but it sounds like oklahoma's you know really allowing people to experiment and then they're gonna i'm sure they'll clamp down in some form or fashion when they kind of identify what the choke points are of what's causing trouble in their community and what happens ironically is there's really not ever any trouble um so then they go oh we could be making more money off uh-huh. this so then you'll start seeing them mm-hmm. charge more money or taxes mm-hmm. or fees or whatever but yeah. um yeah i want to go to oklahoma we're in in ohio oklahoma. um our ohio uh, licensee is building out their kitchen i'm excited to see what that edibles market looks like we are partners with true leave in florida which is probably the top dispensary group in the nation um, we all hear about MedMen, but True Leave's been profitable 
for a long time, and she, her profits are that number is crazy. What do you about? What do you think about the current state of the cannabis industry in Florida? Well, they don't have med, um, edibles yet, and so that we're sitting there waiting. We've got the kitchen ready to roll. So what do they have? What do they have you right know, now? You have flour and concentrates. So. Um, medical though medical, medical only and and it's it's strict you know it's a strict program mm -hmm. so but the, I expect it to go wreck pretty soon yeah my, I mean uh, hopefully you know I don't know from what last time when we went to Miami it at least Miami not you know the rest of Florida but Miami was a very very 420 friendly place oh yeah of course very it is. very yeah, the the black market's thriving. <laughs> the, <it's, laughs> and, like everywhere, right? And everybody's consuming very openly. That's like the last, mm -hmm. like, that's like the last, that's like minor crimes to everybody. Like, ah, they smoke a weed, who cares? It was like that before the medical program got there. The medical program's mm -hmm. just making it easier for sick people to get the medicine. Because people with cancer aren't, like, going to walk up and down the street in Miami looking no, for weed. So this is, not. that truly is a medical program. So what do you think? Let's ask you a very important question that is your area of expertise. What do you think about the landscape in general of edibles as a industry in the country? Like, what do you, what do you think? Like, where do you see it? What do you think the st current state of it is? And where do you see it evolving to? You guys being the industry leader right now. It's a really good question because I'm getting asked that a lot. And I was just at a dinner party at Bobby Paley's house. And shout, shout out, out to, to Bobby Paley, our what? friend and mentor. mentor. One of the big bosses. Absolutely. She's, a, she's definitely a boss. Absolutely. Um, and she, her dinner parties are always a who's who of the cannabis industry. Absolutely. And I don't know what amazing person said this to me, but they said, oh, it must be really nice to be in edibles right now with all the vape crisis going on because <laughs> I'm bullish on edibles. I'm telling everybody edibles is where it's at. So, right. you know, I'd like to believe him. I'd like to think um, that <laughs> we're going to get a capture some more market share than we have right now. I don't know that that's actually going to happen, but um, you know, edibles makes up about 14% of the market share. Um, you know, our ability to get really good data doesn't exist yet and won't until it's federally legal. Mm -hmm. But you know, it, it, I think it's, pretty spot on 14% of the market. So I think we're going to grab a little bit more market share as more users come into the space because mm -hmm. I think not everybody wants to smoke. Nope. I think a new lot users, of people don't want to smoke. Mo mostly new users want to come into eating. You know what I mean? They don't mm -hmm. really want to come into the whole smoke vibe. You know what I mean? Most new uh, THC consumers are older folks and they probably didn't smoke most of their life while they start smoking now so edibles is the easiest way to do it right a nice dinner or some and and, and, or and us knowing about what's going on in metropolitan cities like New York people really don't have the time to roll and smoke as no. much so people want quicker versions like edibles yeah, and so, they're discreet, and they don't make you smell funny. Right. And exactly. you know, and I just had a meeting today with a guy that has a patent on technology that's um, fast acting. So, you, I can put it, the fast acting stuff in my chocolate, for example, which we wouldn't, but let's say a, a beverage or something like that. And instead of waiting an hour or two hours for it to metabolize through your liver, it's early onset, so you can have a, the same experience in 10, 10 minutes or so like you do with your joint. Nice, nice. And that's going to transform how edibles work, because I think that's the one downside. You know, how many of you ha have yeah, you, you had? Wait, you you, you take that chocolate, and then an hour and a half later, you're like, oh, shit, this I, was not the moment. Right. I wanted this to kick in. And yeah. then you're, like, super tripping. Yeah. Yeah, man. I think that's going to come along when, when, when uh, they allow more technology to get involved, right? Mm -hmm. And when they're able to use more technology to make your edibles, correct? Well, technology is not going to do anything but improve what we have going on. So innovation, technology, science, and really particularly science is where we're going to start seeing the cannabis world explode. Because when you start making products with purpose and they actually do what they say they're going to do, um, and you can start monitoring your dosing. That's exactly what we all want. We all know what it feels like to drink a single beer. We know what that's going to do to us. And it's really right now, everyone's just winging it. Yeah, you know? we've been winging it forever. Though. <laughs> yeah, well. You, you know, especially in New York, you wing it. You, you've you been buying off your delivery person or um, <laughs> the juice shop owner or, you know, these guys, you know, you wing it. So. 
but we don't have a history of people overdosing or no. doing it like back in my real estate days and I still have all my my properties I didn't sell any of it I just have a really fantastic team that manages it for me and um I remember training people when they were taking over for me and I'm like okay if they're alcoholic they got DUIs you got to really look at them because they they're likely to you know get in a car accident get their license Mm -hmm. taken away or disappear because alcoholics tend to have a lot of money problems but I'm like the stoners they tend yeah. to be the best ones because they don't, you know, they don't get in fights. Nope. And I always, I kind of zeroed so in on. So you're saying, as a la- big landlord that you are, that stoners are model tenants. Uh, stoners are absolutely not something I'm afraid of to rent to. Awesome. I prefer them. Yes. Yeah. Here, all the real estate gurus around <laughs> right, the right. world. We, we needed you. We needed you here in New York. We, we, you could have helped out a lot. A lot of people. Uh, probably got kicked out because well the one downside is the smell and it does disturb the neighbors Mm -hmm. and so (laughs) I had this standard speech that I would give all my tenants like this is a non-smoking property now I'm talking about tobacco and if you're going to smoke weed you either have to hang out the window or take an edible or do something else I'm totally fine with weed and I try and they don't look at me like (laughs) what are you doing (laughs) now that's actually another important question let's talk about the reason that you're in town for which was Arcview um, which are big fans of Happy Monkey and big supporters and they're also uh, good friends of ours what do you think about the conference and what what did you think about the speakers and the people i think arcview is a really quality organization and if you are at all serious about investing in cannabis um, as an accredited investor it's the it's a no-brainer you have to be a a member they do they make they make it easy for you as an investor and as Mm -hmm. a brand uh, if you're looking for money it's the first place everyone talks about where you're going to go and that's what they do is they put cannabis companies together with investors so either side you're you're going to get a good quality out of that arcview group but i'm here speaking at the women's investors network tomorrow which is a new division of arcview that's specifically designed to put women-owned businesses and women investors shout out to all the women entrepreneurs we are feminists here at happy monkey on the boulevard (laughs) yeah and we're before i forget we're based out of miami so the next time you guys come to miami you got to let me know and i'll show up and and, and roll out the green carpet and roll out the green carpet all right so, since we asked you the smoker question, we since it goes along with your industry and your current occupation, what was your best experience, memorable experience on edibles? So, Thanksgiving of last year, Muggs and I took our kids and their boyfriends and girlfriends um, to Mexico for uh, a nice vacation. <laughs> and I... I had I went straight after um, <clears throat> Arcview and MJ Biz, so I had a suitcase full of products. Oh, man. <laughs> and I realized you were trafficking, Jamie. I, <laughs> I really did not think about it until I landed, and I was like, "Oh shit! I have all oh, this weed. Mm-mm. I had I had Cypress Hill joints. I had, oh, <laughs> I, I mean, a lot of it." And I realized I'm I can't I. Going into Mexico was no yeah. problem, but going back from yeah, Mexico, no, forget yo, Come on, we, we got to right? smoke this. We got to right? smoke all of it. And that same nephew that made me smoke weed that one time. Oh, now he's older. Now he's he's a and super he's, chief. He's a super stoner. Uh, yeah. So I'm like, dude, smoke away. So we just had a we had a nice. You were the favorite auntie on that trip. Totally, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So anyway, Muggs and I ate a bang chocolate bar, and we rented this, like, Cabana By the way, ladies thing. and gentlemen, I'm sorry to cut you off. She's very modest about her chocolate bars yes. and stuff like that. She has gourmet. gourmet chocolate, ladies and gentlemen. Mm-hmm. All right, that's 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 oh, that's a distinct Which difference. Which means that they would be amazing if they weren't infused. All right, there you go. Hundred percent, hundred percent. So, um, yeah, our chocolate was in Whole Foods for 25 years. Like, <laughs> it's really great chocolate. Okay. If you're a connoisseur, mm-hmm. for sure. We have 13 flavors. Really. It's, you should check it out if you're in California and able to buy it freely. Um, but anyway, Muggs and I ate that chocolate, chocolate bar, bar on the <laughs> on the beach in Mexico, and 
I think we laughed for like two hours. We just sat there and you know you when caught the giggles. That's you, awesome. That, it. Yeah. yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. Great. Yeah, that's awesome. That happened to me the first time I got high in general. The giggles, the giggles was what caught me. So mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah, it's the best feeling. Laughter is the best medicine. Laughter. Yeah. Is the so best medicine. here on the boulevard, Jamie, every guest has to answer the million dollar question. Million dollar. Which is if. You had to describe Happy Monkey, the brand, the movement, and everything it embodies in one word. What would it be? Wow, that's a really one word. One, one word. word. Hmm. The future. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like I'll take that, that. Nobody, nobody yeah. ever used that one. That's a good one. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, um, it's more than an honor and a pleasure to have Cannabis Royalty in the, the building. building, Jamie Pearson, COO of Bang, also real estate guru, also happy monkey fan and friend. Thank you so much, much. for coming on the boulevard. One more round of applause for the yes. boss. Thank you for having me, and I wanna just say, from my heart, thank you for what you're doing for our community. This place is the future. It's very, very nice to have a place to go in New York when you're here. You guys are doing it right. This is home right here. Happy Monkey Podcast, everyone. Till the next episode, guys. We're checking out from Happy Monkey Land. You guys have a good one. Remember, you're too blessed to be stressed out there. Mic check, one, two, one, two. We got Jamie, Bobby, and the crew. My homie Sophia in the back. So, guys, till next time, we had the honor and the, the pleasure, pleasure to having the woman, the myth, the legend, legend, the boss lady of the cannabis industry, COO of Bang, real estate guru. Thank you so much for gracing us with your presence. We are appreciate you. Thank you for having me. I wanted to also thank you guys for the service you're providing to our community. It is really important to have a place to go in New York City, and you guys are doing it right. So sh kudos to the Happy Monkey crew. <laughs> Till the next episode, guys, we're checking out of from Happy Monkey Land and the Boulevard. Peace out. See you next time. All right, guys, so the Indica Sativa uh, myth, I wouldn't say myth. I say I think it's real because there's certain um, strains that I wouldn't smoke in the daytime, especially on the wake and bake, you know. So I wouldn't smoke like an OG Kush when I wake up or a Granddaddy Purple. Or, you don't want that couch lock in the nah, morning? I don't want that couch lock in the morning. I think those strains fuck me up. You know what I mean? You need something more uplifting. More up uplifting. and about. Yeah, I'll, up and about. I'll smoke a haze or, 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 or um, uh, what is this I'm smoking right now? Akai Punch. I'm usually smoking a, a sativa when we talking here and talking shit. You know what I mean? Because it, it gives you the creative side. Yeah, and it kind of taps into the to the the chatty the chatty patty side of me, I guess. You know what I'm saying? Good cup of coffee. You know, it's like a like a like a like a decent cup of coffee. You know what I'm saying? I think indica sativa is a real thing. I just really feel like people don't really know if they smoke a sativa. Or no, indica. they don't. Especially here in New York, it took us a very mm. very long time to even understand the difference. Yeah, because nobody New York even is cared new to all of this. Yeah, we used yeah, to have yeah. like two strains available. Like that was Three it. Available. Yeah, that's it, and that's it. You, you that's bought. It. Whatever, you bought whatever the dealer your had. Was, yeah, that's it. Whatever the dealer had, that's what you bought. That's it. And if you're an old school smoker like us, it's an upgrade. It was it was a super upgrade because we went from smoking chocolate to Hawaiian to all this like uh, what we call is haraka, all this dirt type of different weed to anything that's green and fluffy. So we didn't care. We're like, okay, this is green, fluffy, no seeds. We good with that, and it gets four of us high. One blunt gets four of us high, so we didn't care. You know, we just smoke whatever People the dealer had. People are just now starting to really understand the difference between strains and sativas yeah, and all this stuff. and the terpenes and all the different. New York's, you know. like I would say, like four or five years behind the Cali the education of cannabis.
What's good, everybody? This is your nigga Ralph, trying to keep you fresh with the info from Happy Monkey. Every single podcast, you already know what it is. If you haven't followed us yet, follow us on Instagram at Happy Monkey underscore or Happy Monkey Goodies. Now remember, that's Monkey with a U. Also, if you haven't checked us out, we're on YouTube, so check out our channel, Happy Monkey TV. Keep us current, live, and everything with the culture. <laughs>